This video is sponsored by ZWCAD. More about them later in the video. Digital workflows are one of the most important things that you need to learn as a structural engineer. It's something that's coming up quickly and something that you can't overlook. If you do, you're gonna be fine flat-footed and it's gonna to be too late to catch up. So I'll go through some of the problems you might have, some of the ways to try and sell it, and some of the ways you should build your digital workflows to make sure you don't fall into some of the traps that I did and many others have in the past. My name's Reddit, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. One of the biggest drawbacks, especially something that I found, was trying to sell digital workflows within your organization and the benefits behind them. Now, the, what you need to do, especially when you're starting out, is you need to learn how to speak corporate speak. I know most of us don't like to do this, but it's something that will allow us to sell our digital workflows, allow us to build them into the tools that we want them and use throughout the organization. So what does this mean? It means you need to do case studies. You need to say, how much am I gonna save here? How much am I gonna save there? The time savings, but don't even overlook some of the efficiency savings that you'll have and some of the additional benefits that you'll be able to bring to your clients. Like being able to offer many different concepts very quickly to come up with the most efficient solution. It also makes your design safer as you don't have any of the pitfalls that you may have with the traditional methods. Building case studies is one of the most important aspects to trying to sell your digital workflows. One of the biggest drawbacks and trying to get pushed through through any organization, it's trying to get buy-in. Now, what do I mean? How do you get buy-in? Well, you need to sell, sell, sell. What are the additional efficiencies that they have? What are the different options that you can offer to your client? What are the additional benefits that they get as an organization? What are the safety aspects that you're gonna have? So you're building your workflows such that there is no risk there. And the fact that there is no risk, there is no risk even in the traditional methods, which have got a lot of problems with them. You got this copy and paste errors, they've got garbage in, garbage out, where if you're controlling that whole digital workflow, it means that you'll be getting the correct data in, you better process the data correctly and bring it out. If you have your human involved, typically we are the problem. Most of the time we'll make a little mistake here, we'll copy the wrong number there, and this can lead to bad consequences, where if we take that out of our own control and bring it into a digital workflow that we've validated, it means that you've got safer designs that you can do more efficiently, you can do it quicker. So making sure you're building your case studies, showing the time saving and the cost it will take to develop it and how much saving they'll have over time and what is their return on investment. They're the most important things when you're trying to sell it with an organization is speaking that corporate speak and corporate language. There's no business as a charity and I know that we don't like to hear it. We are engineers, shouldn't we just be doing the best? But we still need to make money to do what we love. So you need to making sure you're building up that case study to sell it within your organization so they can spend the time and investment to build them correctly. The next aspect to it is something that we all fall into and I have fallen into the past. You see, when I first started out, I started using VBA. I used to do a little bit of programming in Java, but it was mostly VBA and interactions with Excel. Something that's very easy was typically build those Excel spreadsheets. We've built them out. We've got the numbers in there and something that we're very familiar with. So then we just naturally progress into VBA and using it as is. However, this is the wrong path. But something that I learned with a greater vengeance, at one time I had this giant tool set. It was running really slowly, but it's doing what I want, but it'll take 12 hours to run. Now, for what it was doing, it shouldn't have been taking that long. I'm like racking my brain, why is it taking so long? I did all the aspects of trying to speed up Excel, but it was still the limiting factor. So one weekend I woke up and went, there must be a better way. I decided to look around at the different languages that I have available to me. And I look at Python and over a weekend, I managed to build the same tool that I was doing in Excel in Python, but the efficiency was off the charts. So what was taking 10 to 12 hours in Excel was done in seconds in Python. And this is really where I learned is making sure that you're using the right tools for the right situation. See, whether I just started off in Python, I wouldn't have had that whole heartache and pain that I had in the initial stages. So it's about knowing what tools you have available to you and how you can use them in different workflows and making sure you're picking the right one for the right situation. This brings us nicely into the sponsor of this video, ZWCAD. You see, ZWCAD has APIs, so it allows you to work it into your digital workflows. So you can start off with the BIM, work it into your digital workflow for analysis and design, then come back and allow you to manipulate the drawings. And I've been trying out ZWCAD. I think that everyone should give it a go. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do I want to pick up another CAD software? I'm familiar with the one I'm currently using. However, when you look at ZWCAD's interface and commands, it feels very familiar. So you don't need to spend the time learning a new interface and how it interacts. And guess what? It's fully compatible with DWG formats, along with various other industry 
standard file formats ensuring the highest level of compatibility when exchanging data. But there's many benefits that ZWCAD has over your traditional CAD software, such as it can be a lighter install as you can pick only the aspects that you need to install, meaning it takes less space up on your hard drive. It also runs a lot faster too. Whether you're zooming in and out, panning, or just general drafting tasks, it may be up to 19 times faster, allowing you to meet those deadlines with time to spare. It also has a smart printing feature that allows you to accelerate your time and not have to worry about what size sheets it on. It automatically detects where the sheets are and what their page sizes are and automatically sets it up so you can just print straight away. So you can try ZWCAD in the link in the below description for 30 days on a trial basis. So it's really risk-free and see whether it fits into your digital workflows. There's two ways that you can purchase ZWCAD. You can either do it on a subscription basis or a perpetual license. And both are very cost efficient. So the perpetual license means that you have access to ZWCAD without any ongoing fees. So you only need to pay once and use it forever. No need to sign up to any of those subscription services. Now let's get back to learn about digital workflows. Some of the tools that I would also recommend if you're not so much a programmer, but you do want to get into digital workflows, there's a software called Grasshopper that's linked with Rhino. Now it's really a programming light situation where you have these things called batteries that you can link up and flow the data through. So provided you can do the thoughts in your head about how you want to throw the data through from one area to the other, it allows you to do that. Now we'll go back to case studies as well because you will get pushback saying, what about all the lost IP? Now this is where another good software that's been out recently is a software called Victor, which is a, really a platform. It's not really a software. It's a platform that allows you to build your digital workflows in the background, have a nice graphical interface, but also allow the company to control their IP. If you go away, you lose access to it. They control the source code and allows you to do proper versioning control. Because who hasn't had those problems where you've got multiple Excel sheets? Those Excel sheets change over time, improve, or you find bugs with them and you update them but people throughout the organization have different versions of this. So how can you make sure that they have the correct version? It's really impossible with those Excel spreadsheets, but that's where Victor will make sure it's properly version control. Every time you open the app is the latest version and people can't take it with them. So it's something that I would recommend, especially if you're having trouble selling it, is looking at that platform called Victor as it has many additional benefits. And the one thing you've got to realize as well, when you're trying to build these things out, and something that you'll realize quite early on is that we are the biggest problem. Most of the problems that occur, especially in the design phase, is through us. We're only human, we make mistakes, it will get picked up, and with any modeling, it's garbage in and garbage out. That with that digital workflow, that you're getting the data from the correct place, not needing a person to import it. It means that what you should be starting off with is your BIM software. Moving into your analysis and design phase where you look at the results and how the forces come through and building the models that you're going to do your analysis of. And now it should be built off the original BIM software as opposed to you manually inputting it. So use that as an export to post-process that data and do the design. However you're gonna do that, whether it's in the analysis software or external software, Typically, I like to use my own external apps to do the post-processing as I have more control over it. Then making sure at the end, bringing that back into the BIM software to make sure it's updating the model. Now, this will save you so much time. I had one case where we had saved many hours of updating. In the design of a big building, the client came back and said, I want to double the loads on everything. Now we're thinking, oh my God. How are we going to do this? There's many hours of work. There's thousands of columns. We have to do all the load rundowns again. We need to look at where the forces go and how this affects every single element. But luckily from the start, we had built up our digital workflow such that it is end-to-end -end compatible. So what happens is we just updated the load. It then did the post-processing that it needed to, doing the new additional lateral designs, doing the new column designs and upsizing everything as needed. We double checked everything to make sure it was in the architectural size an update was processed right through to the BIM software. So what, in what would have been weeks worth of work, we were able to do in a matter of minutes. Does mean that at the start of the project, you need to spend a little bit of time making sure you're setting it up properly, but it's something that is very easily worked into any workflow, making sure that you're doing it correctly. Now, we've just only talked about our workflows and how we process it through it. Now, this is only half the story. As we know, we don't design in a bubble, we design with many other people. And when we look at the way current BIM is working, it's very limited in scope. There is some collaboration there, but is it really that great? When you look at what architects do, they mainly look at the look and feel, making sure there's code compliance and getting the dream of what they want and what the client wants. Now they will collaborate a little bit back and forth, but typically there's a person in the middle that's doing that collaboration. 
looking at the architectural drawing, updating the structural models and working it through end to end. Now, when we're using BIM, we then potentially go into the models, but a lot of the time we're building our own software models. And like I was saying at the start, you wanna making sure that your digital workflow doesn't mean that you need to build models from scratch every single time because we will build different models for our analysis. We will different models for lateral design. So there's all these different places where potentially you need to update your design if something changes in the back or the client changes something, which really significantly slows you down. And then when we move into the digital space and construction phase, the client is typically working on paper. So they're not really utilizing BIM to its full potential. So when you build your workflows, and especially when you're working on a big project, it's about talking to the different clients within who you're dealing with. So talking to the architect and working out whether there's a better way. So you want to make sure that you're processing data from the architect and directly using it in your models instead of needing a person to come and update and change stuff. And then also you're pushing data back to the architect in a smart way that allows them to see what the changes are and minimizes the time that they need to be there. This is something that's quite often looked in digital workflows. We're only looking within our own scope but not looking at it on a project basis. And if you're looking on a project basis, it's really where you'll get better buy-in from the clients as they will see the true benefit, digital workflow end-to-end -end, from all the way from architect to engineer to construction and how that can achieve better designs. So there's little smart things that you can do through how you process data back to the client, how you process data to the engineer and giving them direct feedback in real time where possible. Digital workflows are one of the biggest things that you should be focusing on as a structural engineer. But if you do want to know about one simple fact that you probably don't know about that will bring your design to the next level, I've got a link to a video here. Make sure you check it out as it will make your life easier and make you think about structural engineering in a different way. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon members. Without the support of my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And I'd just like to give a quick shout out to a couple of my new YouTube and Patreon members. I'm sorry if I brought you a name, feel free to reach out, send me a message, and I'll happy to give you another shout out as well. I'd like a quick shout out to Hal Eugene, Michael Johnson, and Brad Shipton. They're all from Patreon. Debashish, thank you for the support of all my YouTube and Patreon members. I would not be able to produce the content or video that I do today. And as always, keep learning and I'll see you next week. Bye.